this space. Brilliant. Right. Well, Bobby, I'm thinking it's time. We're one minute past. I think let's, yeah. let's get into this. All right. Great. Well, so yeah, I think a really great place to start today is if we just cover off our agenda. What are we going to be covering in today's webinar? We know we've said trade in your training, but what is trade in your training? If you're an existing customer or you've seen some of our previous webinars, um, especially around onboarding, you've seen us allude to trade in your training and cover it off slightly, but we thought it was definitely time to give it um, its own time in the spotlight and actually go a bit further into trade in your training and how this could be something definitely of use to some of our newer customers. So we're gonna be going through what is trade in your training. We're also gonna be covering off some of our customer stories. So this is hearing from some of our customers that have already gone through the trade in your training process because who's, I feel like some people always think, Bobby, and you'll agree with me that this is too good to be true. So yeah. you need to hear from some people who've gone through it, who are preaching the word of trade in your training and saying that everyone needs to get on board because it's not too good to be true. We're doing it because we wanna help you out and it's just fantastic. So. I can't wait to share their stories. They're really interesting. And then we'll pass over to Bobby, who's give, gonna give us a live demo of actually walking through the trade and your training process. So it's all well and good as talking about it, but how do you actually go through the process? How do you leave this webinar today and say, I wanna take part, but how? So Bobby's gonna be our kind of master taking us on a tour of how we're gonna go through that journey. So it's gonna be a good one. Yeah. And if, well, so, I think best place to start, what is trade in your training? So trade in your training is one of our schemes here at EDARP to help you kind of shortcut the process of creating content. We know that when getting started, some of the hardest areas um, that you might tackle, even with like, um, the authoring tool being as easy as it is and as fun to be able to create content, it can still be quite a struggle to actually have the time to start creating your content. You might have a series of PowerPoints or like written documents or PDFs from years of training, but you're thinking, how do I actually take all this now and bring this into add up into the digital space? So this is where trade and your training comes in. We wanna help you shortcut that process by taking some of that content for you, passing it over to our designers and actually creating this content within Edit Up for you. So you can spend this time getting to grips with actually navigating the platform, exploring the authoring tool at your own pace, and then also being able to focus more on onboarding and actually what future content you wanna have. So we wanna just take some of that weight off your shoulders and do it for you. And what's even nicer about this is that our designers are so experienced in creating content. If you've already had a look through the content library, you've seen examples of their work. So these are gonna be fun, interactive, and even better, they're gonna showcase your brand. So we're gonna have it branded to your business. So as soon as you get this back, you're gonna think, wow, we can just share this right away. And it's a really nice resource for being able to have alongside content from the content library and just move the branding over, which we'll kind of cover a little bit today, but also perhaps just being able to test the platform and kind of see, get a feel for it or just share it straight away with your team or use this as a starting point for creating further content. So this is something why we're so passionate about kind of preaching the word of trade in your trading, because this is you being able to get your content within ADAP at no cost. So brilliant. So let's go through kind of a little bit of the process. Can you go on to the next slide, Bobby? Brill. So how do we get started? It's all well and good me saying that we'll take it and pass it on to the designers. How do you actually get started? So you can upload your training, whether this be uh, PowerPoints, PDFs, perhaps we've had Excel documents, Word documents, and you upload these. And what we'll do is we'll then be able to review these. We might have a few questions. So you might get a phone call from myself or Bobby just wanting to know a little bit more, kind of get to know a little bit more about your journey, what interactions you want the learners to have with this content, how you want the look and feel. Um, and then we feed that back to our designers. So they're the experts, they've got the design know-how and they're gonna create this into some fantastic looking training content. And this could be done in as little as 24 hours in some cases. Just um, so that could be you just sending off some training the next day, getting that back. And you can either share this with your team, roll it out to the whole team, or even just use this to start thinking, great, I've got a starting point for creating more content. 
let's get started, let's get stuck in. So if we go to the next slide, Bobby. So we've got two main ways of being able to submit your training. Now we've got um, our web page, which you can submit the training through this form that we see in front of us, which is our edapp.com slash trade dash in dash your dash training. And you can fill this in, upload your documents, submit it, and that's you done until you hear from us. So easy as that. But we've also got a second way as well, which some of you who've already existing um, customers with EDAP and have your own account, you've probably seen that we've got a button within our PPT conversion to go through trade and your training like that. Don't worry if you haven't seen it yet, if you've been exploring the platform, but you haven't had a chance to have a look, we're going to go through that. Bobby's going to take us on that tour and he's going to point that out so everyone knows how we can leave this webinar thinking, brilliant, let's trade in some training. Great. So <clears throat> I've kind of given us a little bit of an overview there of trading your training, what it consists of. But I'd said before, I think it's really valuable for us to be able to hear from an actual EDAP customer about their journey through trading your training. So we're going to hear from Shane from Learnful, and he's got a great video where he's just going to tell us a little bit more about his experience with trading your training. My name is Shane Ormsby and I'm a founder of Learnful, an online provider of university and industry verified professional diplomas in transferable and in-demand skills. When we engaged with ADAP, one of the key challenges we had was translating our traditional face-to-face -face materials into online micro lessons. The trade in your training is now one of our most used features within ADAP. Everybody, from the subject matter experts that we work with to most importantly the overwhelmingly positive student feedback that we've received convinced us that we've made the right choice here. The best bit is the speed and efficiency that we're now able to complete the micro lessons having availed of some early help and guidance from the curriculum design experts within EDAP. Based on our six months of experience I have no hesitation in recommending EDAP. Great. So that's a little bit from Shane there. And one thing I want to mention as well is that Shane and the team at Learnful have taken that trade in your training and they've used that as that starting point to continue creating content. Um, and it's been a really great learning experience for them paired with the one to many onboarding sessions to be able to learn how to really get in depth with the authoring tool, how to take what the designers have created and start to create that type of content themselves. So their content's looking fantastic. It saved them so much time. And while that content was getting created, they could focus on kind of their priorities, starting to think about new content, how they're going to start inviting users when they want to deploy. So it's really great to be able to share feedback from Shane about how they've found trade in your training. Now, during the live demo with Bobby that we're going to have in a moment, we're actually going to cover off the journey of Louis, which is a motocross company out in Australia. So we're going quite global at the moment. We've heard from Learnful in Ireland. And now we've got Louis motocross in Australia. We're hitting all, all different corners of the globe right now. But they're a really interesting kind of use case for using trade in your training. They've been um, onboarding all of their team through more traditional methods of kind of paper and face-to-face -face training for the last 25 years and their contact as well wasn't someone who focused in learning and development they were someone who were just passionate about being able to upgrade their training and trade in your training was being able to help them kind of shock that and actually start to get an experience of what their training could look like digitally so I think we can all imagine that with motocross there's so much health and safety I imagine with just even getting on the bike getting on the course so they were able to provide some of their kind of health and safety training for their team and for people who were taking part in motocross and we were able to recreate that in EDAP for them so they could then literally sit back when they receive that easily deploy it to their team and be able to know that this training that they've created can be of use straight away and they found it a really fantastic way of being able to take this as that starting point and continue to create that training. And also they mentioned just the amount of time it saved them. This training that was done face-to-face -face, take a number of hours. And now using these micro lessons, this can be done in 
half the time if that probably more that was me <laughs> me making probably an more. estimate probably more even more slash all the time yeah. but it's really fantastic to be able to see kind of what we had which we're going to show you to what we've got now so Bobby I think I'm going to hand it over to you I think this would be a great chance for us to actually kind of look at this journey and see what this training was and where we brought it to agreed agreed yeah Th thanks for that introduction Jess um, I All think right. we do, as I, as I get set up here, I think we do have one question in there, if you don't mind um, uh, checking out for me real quick. Brilliant. Okie dokie. So we've got someone, um, we've got um, Niall here asking, how long will this demo be on spot? We have a few colleagues who are interested, but they're currently in meetings. So all of our webinars, even though they're live right now with myself in the UK and Bobby over in the US, we do put all of our webinars on our YouTube channel. So if you're wanting to refer back to some of our previous webinars, like we have some great ones around getting started, how to um, share content on board users and track those users. So feel free if you want to catch up on some of our previous webinars, um, watch them on our YouTube channel. And if you go far enough back, you'll see us in all the different seasons where we've got our jumpers on, we're freezing and not melting like we are now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Um, all right, cool. So I'm going to take over now, Jess. So um, yeah. bef before I even show, show the EDAP platform, um, I just kind of want to talk about um, the Louis Motocross um, case study here. So they had this very short PowerPoint that was on protective clothing. Um, again, they're, they're a motocross company out of Australia. Um, but here it's a very short presentation. It's only seven slides. And you could see here too that there isn't, there isn't much imagery here either. Um, so pretty much what, what I want to showcase here and show you now is what our instructional design team can do for you. And, and if you have presentations that are more than seven slides, that's okay. Um, we can even do Word documents, PDFs, um, you know, Google slides, you name it. Um, but in this case, this was, the, this, was, this was just a very short PowerPoint presentation um, that they wanted to, um, sorry, have us convert for you, have us convert for them. Um, so now just let me show you, let me minimize this and let me bring up my preview here. So this isn't, this is what we created for them. So you'll see here that right off the bat in this preview, we have this really nice image of a motocross rider here. Um, and then pretty much what they did too, not only did they add an imagery, but they also added in some interactivity and some, uh, some gamification into this uh, for them as well. So I'm just going to click through some of the slides here. So you know, this is a screen cap that you saw in the presentation we were just showing you there as I scroll through. I'm not going to go through this entire lesson here, but, you know, this is one of the scratch to reveal slides that we have here. Um, again, really cool stuff here. I'm just going to keep continuing here. This just zooms in on a region here. And you'll see here up top, you know, we added in a logo. Um, this is going to be the, the name of the, of the lesson here. As I'm progressing through, these are how many slides and what slide that I'm on. Here we get the strike out an incorrect word. Cool. So it, if you get the answer correct, that little chime will pop up. And this is some this is some uh, custom wording that you as an admin can customize in the admin portal. Um, but again, our instructional design team will do this for you. Um, just moving on here. You know, we have a bunch of image uh, image type slides. You know, text type slides, interactive slides. Here I'm just going to like click through some of these options here. Um, and there we go. Um, I'm, again, I'm not going to go through the entire uh, lesson that we have here, but this is just one of the examples of what our instructional design team can do for you. So they can take, you know, a presentation or a document that was primarily just text and make it interactive, add in, you know, some gamified slides, add in some imagery as well. Um, and again, like just said, you know, this can be done in some cases under 24 hours, which is awesome because we know that the biggest blocker you know, to launching to an audience is the content creation piece. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to, I want to, I'm going to close, uh, I'm going to switch back over to my admin portal here. Um, and I'm going to show you how to upload a document. So before we had mentioned, um, actually, let me, let me go to edapp.com real quick. Um, if you haven't signed up for an, an account yet, you just go, go to our website and click sign up free really quickly. And then you just have to fill out a form. And then once you do, you can then, you will then be prompted to um, this admin.edup.com website here. So this is our admin portal, and this is where you can create content, 
You can invite users, you can check out analytics. I'm not gonna get into that right now, but what I really wanted to show you from the Courseware Courses page here is that we have a Convert PowerPoint button. So if you wanted to upload the materials through our, through, um, our admin portal, you just come here, click on Convert PowerPoint, and then you're prompted with two options. So immediate conversion is if you wanted to try doing it yourself, but if you wanted to take advantage of this trade in your training program, you would just click right here and then click open. And then this form pops up. So if I scroll down here, just has you put in a couple information about yourself and there's um, three spots here for you to upload some files. Um, now, as just mentioned before, once you do that, pretty much what's gonna happen is um, Jess or myself, or maybe someone else from, from um, our company would reach out to you. You know, if we have any questions, we, we'd ask you some questions. Uh, we might need some clarification on a few things. Um, and we do really kind of want to get to know your program a little bit, trying to, you know, we, we want to understand why you, why you want to use that app. We can also answer any questions that you have at that point as well. And then from there, what we'll do is we'll usually convert uh, a lesson or two for you in the beginning. So if you, if you submit three files, we'll probably do the first one at first. Um, and then we'll give you some time to review it, um, ask any questions. Um, I've also had meetings with with some some of these people that have submitted some uh, some content, um, and you know just to help them through some things. You know maybe maybe they're not really used to the admin portal or how some things work. Um, so at the end we're gonna we're gonna have you know some emails for you to reach out. You can also reach out to me and Jess also um, if you needed help with anything you know regarding trainer training or an app in general. Um, yeah, so pretty much what you would do is <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> Pretty much what, so after you come here and submit this, this submit this documentation, um, we'll usually, you'll usually get an email from me or Jess or someone else. And if we have any questions, we'll ask that. Um, if not, we'll just confirm that, you know, it's good to go. Um, and we'll try to give you an ETA on, on when you get the content back. Um, the other way that you could submit uh, trade in your training is if you go to our website and scroll down here and click on this trade in your tra training button, this is the website that, we showed on screen before. So it's edup.com slash trade dash in dash your dash training. Um, and we'll put this in the chat. Um, it'll be, you know, we're, we're recording this. So you'll, you'll be able to, you know, uh, watch this again in case you miss it or anything like that. But again, just scroll down here. Here's just a mobile preview. And here is just the for another form that you can submit your documentation. Um, cool. So let me, let me come back over to the admin portal now. So I'm in my webinar account. And you'll see here that this is this is the course, the entire course that we did for Louie. So if I come here and click on edit, you'll see here that we did three lessons for them, okay? Um, and up here, we have the uh, course title and you also have the option to add a description in here as well. Um, so yeah, what, what's awesome is that, you know, you can come in here, you can click into each one of these. So if you wanted to see what one of these looked like, you can just come here, Let, let's select the second one here come in here and then you can just, you know, click to preview here. You can also, you know, come in here and, you know, mess around with the preview here as if you were a learner. You know, you can, you can uh, cycle through things, you know, you can, um, or, and you can also change the device setting here too as well. So if you want to see what it looked like on certain device types here, iPhone X, you know, if you wanted to come down, see what it looked like on a Galaxy Note, you can also put in custom dimensions as well to see what it would look like. Um, and just one thing to mention too, because we're a, they're a microlearning platform, but our coursework can be taken on the web as well. So it can be taken on desktop or laptop, just a common question that, that always comes up. Um, cool. Let me come back to the course level here now. Um, so again, we here we have all of our lessons here. Um, what I want to show you now is after you know after you have you know everything from us, you know we converted all your materials, you know what what to do next, right? So if you wanted to edit anything or maybe add in, you know, a slide or two, I'm just going to show you how to briefly open up the offering tool and do that. So if I click on this first lesson here, we have this edit, edit lesson content button that you can click on. Now I'm not going to, I'm not going to do a full blown offering tool demo here, but you can come in here and you can add a new slide. This opens up our template picker. If you wanted to add in, you know, some information, we have a whole bunch of content slides and interactive slides over here on the left hand side. But this is how you would do that. And then you can also come in here and delete a slide, you can duplicate a slide, you can change the template as well. Um, so that's, that's just one thing that I wanted to cover off right off the bat. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you now is that um, not only do we, you know, 
input some custom imagery, we, we can also input uh, some custom CSS down here. So pretty much what this allows for us to do is we can pull, you know, custom fonts, we can pull custom colors as well. Um, and that's going to define inside the lesson itself here. You'll see that we have different colors here. So we made the, this button blue and white. We can do that using custom CSS. So if you wanted to take advantage of that and even take advantage of, you know, the logo is going to be in the top left hand corner. You know, if you like how everything looks and you want to use it for a course that you want to create yourself. Um, it's very easy to do. Um, there's a couple ways, but what I, what I would recommend is just duplicating the course, right? So here we have the course. If I click on the three dots here for more, here you can duplicate it. So if I click on this, mission accomplished, and then I'll click view my new course. So if you wanted to name this something else, like let's say, let's pretend that this is going to be a uh, new hire onboarding. And we can just delete the description for now. What you can do is, let's say, and let's delete the rest of these lessons. What we can do is when we go to uh, create a new lesson, it's going to carry over all the rules from the course that we duplicated. So let's create a lesson from scratch. So if I click the create a lesson button here, um, what's gonna happen is it's gonna prompt you to name it here. Let me name it onboarding. And then once you do that, you'll see here that here is the branding from the previous course that I just duplicated. When you create a lesson from scratch, it's going to give you a title slide and an exit slide, okay? Um, the, the title slide you can change, the exit slide you can't, but say if you wanted to use some of that, you know, cool custom imagery that I just showed you in, in the previous lessons, what we can do here is if I open up the authoring tool again and hit add a lesson content, what I can do here, if I click add a new slide, it's possible to import slides from other lessons in your account. So if I click this import button down here in the bottom left and search for the lesson. So it was, it was on protective gear. Here it is. What we can do here is we can import this slide and you can do multiple slides at once too, if you like. I just want to do the, this one to get to grab this image. So you can just come in here and select insert one slide. So here it is. So what we can now do is we can delete this title slide and then come in here and change the caption. So again, we let's, can all let's agree stick with our on yeah. I think we can all agree that this title slide looks so much better than that title slide that we've been pre-populated. So that's right. just a tip from our designers as well. If you were wanting to create this for yourself, if some reason you weren't going through trade in your training it's just the image slider tab and this is something as well that can be covered in our authoring sessions in the one to many but yeah, yeah. this is a, a tip from the designers and it looks so much better right exactly so you know now you're pretty much set up for success you can do some other editing in here if you like you can add sections you can remove sections if you wanted to like if you wanted to remove some of these or change these around um, one thing to mention too is that we have a built-in integration with Canva. So if you don't have imagery on your computer to use, if I just click the design on Canva button here, you can search Canva for many different categories, right? So if we search for onboarding here, let me, I'm not sure what we will have, but you'll see that there's a bunch of pro images here. Those you need to have a paid Canva account to use, but there, there are a bunch of free images that you can use as well. So like, say if you wanted to use this one, you can just come in here, click on this, and you could change the background color here. You can also you can also make some things transparent. So if you wanted to make this image transparent, you can do that as well. And then what you would do is just come in here and click publish, and that would be it. Um, so again, pretty much setting you up for success. And then and then after you know you have your first slide all set, you would just come in here, open up the template picker here. When I click add a new slide, and then you would just insert in the slides that you would want to do. Um, normally, our recommendation is that we usually like to keep um, the lesson short and sweet. Usually, I usually say around 15 to 20 slides maximum. I don't know if you agree with that or not, Jess, but that's what I usually like to say. Yeah, I usually go about 12 to 18, but I think we're both going go. along the same kind of the same kind of um, way. And one thing to note as well, just if when you are creating your own content, just another kind of like a little helpful tip from the designers is that a lot of the times when designers are actually creating content for trading your trading, they'll have half of their screen 
with the original piece of content, so whether that's a PowerPoint or that PDF. And then the second half of their screen is actually the authoring tool. And this is a really intuitive way of being able to create content because rather than looking at this piece of content as, oh, it's a PowerPoint of 20 slides and it being quite overwhelming, you can actually start to look at these slides in these smaller bite-sized chunks of information and thinking, cool, I've got these couple of sentences. What interaction do I want the learners to go through? Do I want them to swipe up and down? Do I want them to scratch to reveal? And you can start to take that information and look through the templates and think, great, I want them to make this interaction. Let's bring this in. And it's just a really intuitive way of being able to create content at your own pace without it being overwhelming. Um, and it also allows you to get really creative. And another tip yeah. as well is always use like a good variety of slides. Make Absolutely. sure it's fun and interesting. Yeah, I mean, even our content type slides, you know, where you're reading text or looking at images, even those are interactive. So you might have to tap or swipe or scrub or something like that. Um, but yeah, we have a bunch of interactive type slides from sentence construction and deconstruction to multiple choice to numbers, relationships and games. These are all of our gamified type slides. So normally what we like to do is put in a couple content slides at first and then maybe throw in an interactive slide, let's say a multiple choice type slide. Um, but again, what's nice is that, you know, if you wanted to insert multiple, multiple choice type slides, and that was a tongue twister right there, uh, um, in one lesson, you can do so and just pick different templates here. So you can pick the chat, you can pick, you know, the image multiple choice if you wanted to do with images. So um, it just re really makes it fun and engaging. And, you know, we see completion rates upwards of 85 to 90% here because the audience, you know, not only is having fun doing this, but, you know, they also want to want to complete these lessons because, uh, you know, you might want to set up like a leaderboard or, you know, they can track their progress in the learner's app. So they just want to, you know, get everything done. Um, but again, this is all stuff for maybe another webinar, but just something that I wanted to review with, with you here. We've um, got a, um, a question here actually from, um, from Kenneth Bobby, and he's wanting to great. know a little bit how you can progress from having your content created to actually starting to deploy this to your users or your customers or your employees, whatever sure. the case may be, but how are we going to share this content? Sure. It's, it Honestly, it's very easy. So you'll see here, it, Again, I'm from the Courseware Courses page here. You'll see on, on the cover here, we have some that are published and some that are in draft mode. Uh, anything that's in draft mode, no one will be able to see in the learner's app, okay? It needs to be published. Um, so all, all we need to do, like say if we wanted to, you know, let's pretend that, that this onboarding course was done. All we need to do is come here and publish it. And if you have users in your account, um, and if you're on the free plan, everything's going to be universally accessible. So anyone that you've invited to your account will be able to see this courseware. Um, if you are on a paid plan and you have user groups, you could segment the content, but I'm not going to get there right now. Um, let's just pretend that, you know, everything is universally accessible. But what happened is you would come here and publish this course and any users that were in your account would then be able to see it. Um, they do get automatic push notifications as well. Um, depending on, on how it's set up in your account, usually it, it's, you know, every few days after the course is published, they'll get a push notification if it hasn't been completed yet. Um, but, you know, if, if you, you know, say you don't have any users in your account at all, there's a couple ways that you can invite some users. So if you come to the users tab and go to invite users, this is a good way just to pop in some email addresses here. Um, and pretty much what would happen is you can come here, you can edit the subject line, and then they'll get an email saying that here are your login credentials, um, they'll give them the links to the mobile apps and also give them a link to the to the web app that can be used on desktop or laptop. So this is just a quick, easy way to do it. And you can and you're not limited to three here. You can just keep clicking this add another user button, or you can do it in bulk too by clicking on this bulk tab. So if you have a hundred users you want to invite, it might be easier to do it in bulk via our CSV template. Um, the other way is that you can also enable a universal invite code here. So I'm going to users registration. If you enable this. Um, you can just, you know, in, uh, insert an invite code here. You can also display your custom logo if you would like as well. Um, and pretty much what would happen is when, when they would go to log in on, on their end, there's a spot for them when they create an account to insert that invite code. So they pop in their email, they pop in the invite code. And then once they do that, they will then, and you know, go through the registration process. They'll finalize that. And then after they go through that, any published courseware that you have in your account, they'll, they will be able to see. Um, 
So yeah, that, that, these are just a couple of easy ways that you can you know, get some users into your account, but to answer the question, yeah. So pretty much anything that is published here, um, they'll be able to see if, in if it's in draft mode, they won't be able to see it. One thing I wanna highlight as well, I've mentioned it slightly earlier in the webinar um, about our on one-to-many sessions. So I'd mentioned before that we have one on authoring. We do have three within the series. So we've got our first one around authoring. So you're welcome to register that. It's like a live tutorial and it's gonna take you through the fundamentals of authoring content. Then we also have a second around user and content management, which is kind of what we're discussing right now. How are we gonna start inviting our users? How are we gonna start sharing this content with them? Um, and in that um, one-to-many session, we kind of cover everything to do with user and content management. And then we also have a third, and this one covers engagement features and analytics. So you've seen that it's kind of the steps of getting on board with EDAP and going through the process, creating content, inviting users, managing those users and keeping them engaged. So we can share a link within the chat of how to register for these sessions. But if you haven't signed up and these are areas of interest to you, where they're at within your journey, make the most of them. They're such a handy resource to be able to tap into. But again, also, you can also see previous webinars on the YouTube channel if you're uh, wanting to see them. Watch them just freely in your own time. So I just like to highlight those for us as well. Um, and then, yeah, Bobby, we've also got another question here as well. So yeah. someone's asking, is it possible to embed this on their own site? To embed, embed the course? Um, yeah, I believe probably the, I think, I'm, I'm going to take a guess that most of web um, add up, they're saying like iframe or something similar. Um, I don't believe so. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend it um, because then there's no way that you can track the analytics for your users. Mm. Um, so we, we do have like th that preview link that I showed you here. It's possible to, you know, have that, but I'm pretty sure it, you, it can't be embedded but I would definitely mm. recommend just coming and inviting your users. So if you wanted to track some things, such as like completion percentage, or, you know, you can also track scores. So if you have interactive slides in there, they're gonna get scored on all of that. You know, you can even, if you wanted to deploy a quiz, you can also do that too. And then see what they, you know, see what score they got in the quiz as well. So definitely. Um, it's possible, yeah. but I would definitely, yeah, I would definitely just, you know, recommend just inviting everyone under your account to, to take the courseware. Yeah, just to add to that as well, is your learners are going to get the best user experience by using our app on our native apps or on our web page. If you were wanting a journey of users coming through your website to then sign up to our app, as if perhaps there was a payment gateway or something like that, we're getting a little bit complicated here, but we do have information about it in our help center. It is possible you can have that journey be taken. Um, but what I'd probably suggest is if this is something of interest, definitely reach out to the team for a demo. We can get kind of a bit more of an understanding about what your use case is, how we can recommend more information. Um, so that's probably the best next steps for yourself as a journey. Um, and yeah. also we've got another question here. Can we upload custom fonts? You can, as long as it's hosted online, um, it can, it can be it can be included in the custom CSS field. So let me come back to this course here. Um, if you want to enable it across all lessons in the course, you come to the branding tab and then come down here. So you'll see here that we are using a custom font here um, from Google Fonts. So it is possible, it just needs to be hosted online somewhere. And we have guides too in our support center that can help you do that. You can also in here input custom colors too. So if you wanted to, you know, if you if you wanted to input you know, colors from your logo or something like that. And you had hex codes on all different, you know, points in your logo, you can just come in here and then in using this, you know, target specific elements too, to say, you know, maybe I want, you know, the text to be one color, the accents to be another color, um, things like that. That's all gonna be done in the um, custom CSS uh, uh, field here. But yeah, we have a bunch of guys in our support center. I definitely would recommend you checking it out at support.adapt.com. And one thing I want to kind of mention off the back of that as well, if there's anyone like myself that as soon as they see CSS, they're a bit like, whoa, what is this? This is a lot. If you're going yeah. through trade and your training, our designers are going to handle this for you. So yeah. if you were wanting to use this as a starting point for creating more content, you can either do the handy way of duplicating like Bobby's taking us through, or you can even just copy and paste everything within this box and post okay. it into your new course. So 
don't get overwhelmed by this we'll sort it out for you and if it was that you ever had any questions about it there's always live chat which is that little speech bubble in the bottom right hand corner yep right down here brilliant and um, we've got um bobby one more question from kenneth actually he's wanting to just know a little bit more just to talk briefly about brandon and we're already on this tab can we just briefly walk through just up at the top we've said css but for some of us who aren't a instructional designer or someone just wanting to play around with branding ourselves can we just cover yeah. it slightly yeah absolutely so um i'm on the branding tab on the course level branding can also be done like if you if you want it for the lessons inside of a course to have different branding it's possible also normally we would just recommend all lessons in a course have the same branding because it, it's just easy and it looks nice so there's there's a few different options that we have here and you'll see that the design on canva button is available for all of these so the cover image that's going to be what you see in the admin here so it's going to be this image and it's also going to be what the learners see in the app here so if i come here when they launch the course this is the image that, that they're going to see here and then on top of it is going to be cover image text so here is where you could change the cover image text to be white or black okay um, the thumbnail we're not going to talk about because that, that's actually going to be uh, depreciated soon. But pretty much what you're going to want to be focusing on is this lesson branding here. So here is going to be the background and the logo. And you can see here too that we do give you recommended dimensions to use for each one. Um, so if you had a logo that you had in your computer, you know, that you wanted to deploy, you can just come here and just upload the image from your computer. Um, or, you know, say for background, if you're not sure what you want to use, you can use the design on Canva button here. And then if I click on the elements tab here, they have some backgrounds here, but you can also search for like certain color backgrounds. Like here they have like white background, yellow background, things like that. So pretty much all you're really going to need to do for the background, you're probably not really going to need to do much resizing. You would just come in here, you know, click this here. You might want to make it stretch across the whole entire screen here. Um, but again, that's up to you. And then you would just come in here and then just click publish here. And then that would be the background for all lessons, um, for all lessons inside of that course. Now, if you had some image sliders, there are some slides that cover the entire screen. That image would then take place, take precedent over the background. Um, but other than that, that's a quick and easy way to do that. We also have a color scheme here too, where if you just wanted to, you know, have a color and then a text color as well. You can you can customize that here so you know say in this case if we wanted a blue background with white text here you can come in here and this is where you can do that so again this is if you just wanted to you know change the color we do give you a, a default blue this is the default that we do give you but if you want to just change the color in the text and not really get too fancy you can do that here by using the color scheme uh, menu here Great. And um, we've got another question here from Robin, which I'll take. So he's wanting to know, is it possible to move existing content in SCORM folders from another LMS or another authoring tool within to edit? And yet, Robin, 100%, you can bring existing SCORM content into edit. Um, what we usually recommend as well is that with some content that you might already have in an existing LMS, you may personally want to start making use of some of the interactions and the different slides available within EDAP. So we do find that quite a few customers who have started by bringing in SCORM files start to explore the authoring tool and not to over exaggerate, get blown away. And they actually yeah. want to take their existing content and level up. So they actually start kind of remaking it within the authoring tool just so that they know that there's a range of interactions like we're at a point now in terms of creating training and learning that at EDAP, I think Bobby will agree, we're about pushing those boundaries and making sure that this content is fun, interactive, and we're doing away with boring classroom PowerPoints or online training, which is just pressing the same button over and over next. We want something that's gonna blow our team away and start to build a culture of learning within a business, because that's gonna give people that kind of confidence to start taking their development to that next level because they know that it's it's not going to be a total bore. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be fun. You can but, also book you, you can also bookend a scorm file with some of our slides too. So definitely. if I click add a new slide here, come to advanced and hit this is where you can upload a scorm file here. So what we've seen is that you know someone will upload a scorm file and then maybe after that pop in a couple of the interactive slides. So let's have a multiple choice one after it here. 
So again, again, if that's something that you would want to do, if you wanted to include the SCORM file, the SCORM file, again, we recommend you just using our authoring tool to create and use our different templates to create the course. But if you do have some stuff in SCORM content, it is possible to upload here. And then again, you could, you know, say if you wanted to have a content slide, say expandable list have come in before this SCORM package plays, it's possible to use our slides to book in that to make it, you know, even more interactive, which is really nice. Great. I think um, looking at the time, probably got um, enough time for maybe one, two more questions. If anyone's yeah. got any more, feel free to send them in um, through the chat. We can cover them off now. Or if it is that you're actually wanting to kind of take this conversation a bit further, have a chat with myself, Bobby, or someone else in the team. We'll also, just before the end, show you how you can actually start to get in contact with us. I think if you're a new customer and you're just getting started, and this has kind of opened your eyes and got you excited about EDAP, but you're wanting to have a bit of a discussion about what are the next steps? What support can EDAP give? definitely book a demo and we yeah. say this we this is preaching to the choir we say this all the time on webinars like feel free to book a demo we're not scary our main aim is to make sure that your questions get answered you know how to use the platform you know your next steps and you're excited about going about those next steps because if you're investing time into creating training you want to know that you're ready and you know everything about the platform so if anyone asks you you can get them excited about it too exactly. like life's too short for boring training and who's got the time for that now <laughs> it is and you have a lot of resources at your disposal too like we mentioned the live chat down here we also have our support website with a bunch of help articles so you have a lot of support at your disposal but um yeah did you want to did you want to go through one or two more questions just before we end yeah i think we've got one um here from kenneth saying if you're doing say for example first aid course um as a teacher mm -hmm. is it worthwhile using edap instead of powerpoint and I think this probably could touch on perhaps our move towards presenter mode in the future, Bobby. I feel like you might be able to see more about this than I do, but <laughs> um, maybe we're both a little bit lost. <laughs> so you, do, you think, you, do you think that um, he's talking about like, um, instead of creating something in Power, like he hasn't created something yet, he just wants to create it, but thinking about using PowerPoint or EdApp, like to start one of the two, do you think that's what he's saying? Perhaps. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to take this as the idea that kind of's got a room full of people who are learning first aid. Uh, and perhaps he's wanting to, I mean, you've got two avenues there, really. Would you want to be showing a PowerPoint or would you want to have the team be able to go through the learning at their own pace on their right. mobile? You can also do, yeah, you can also do a combination of both if you want. So yeah, you can 100%. also present this in a classroom type setting. Again, we do have a, a desktop view. So you can, you know, bring this up on your computer. And then what you can also do is you can have them all download that app, you know, on their, on their mobile device, or if they, if, you know, they have computers in class, they can also do it there. And then as you're presenting, you know, they can, they then could go through these things and answer some of these questions. Um, and again, what's, what, again, what's great is that as they're, as you're doing that, um, all of their analytics will get recorded. Or, or what you can do too, is you can break some things up, right? So let's say that we have these three courses, you know, it's mostly content and then you want to do a quiz at the end. You can do that as well. So again, and so it could be something where, you know, you present all the material you want to present and then you're like, all right, um, on, ed, on EdApp, not on PowerPoint. Because again, like you, even, even if you want to do, go through some interactive slides yourself, it's just, you know, cooler and nicer to look at. And then what you, what you can do is you can be like, all right, let's, um, you know, open up your mobile devices. And now take this quiz based off of the material that, you know, we, I just presented to you. That is an option. Um, and then a cherry yeah, on the top think, could be the next day, maybe a rapid refresh quiz, going through what's being taught on the session. You know, just using absolutely. a good range of features there. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think yeah. We're, yeah, I think we're coming up on time, Bobby. So I think if we can we just are. show the contact details for if anyone here is wanting a demo um, and depending on what region you're on, who to reach out to. Uh, we'll sure. keep this on the screen while we're wrapping up. Um, but one thing to mention as well, just quickly, if it is that you're wanting to know a little bit more um, about, not so much knowing a bit more, but wanting to drop in and actually ask questions directly to our designers, they do host twice weekly drop-in sessions depending on your region, um, whether you be in UK and Europe, whether we're over in North America, wherever in the globe, you can be free to hop into these sessions and ask those questions. And then if we hop over to the last slide, We've also got our contact details. 
for having a personalized demo. So if you're over in the UK, we've got Jamie, or through the US, we've got Luke, or you can also book demos directly on our website. So you can select your region, you can select what time's best for you, and we'll make sure that we can personalize this demo to your business. It's just a really nice chance to be able to discuss your plans moving forward. And hopefully you'll learn a few bits that you didn't know beforehand. That's always the aim. But also, like I said, that you're excited to get started because I know we are, as you can't tell, because I feel like me and Bobby are both <laughs> show our enthusiasm really well.